Welcome to your daily dose of blogging advice and tips. My name is Anna from The She Approach and I help content creators make money blogging. Part of what I do includes working one-on-one -on -one with blog coaching clients and I was doing this particular blog audit for one of my client's blogs uh, and I noticed her affiliate links were not marked as no follow. So I sent that in the audit recommending that she make sure she fixes them and she came back to me and say, what now? If you're in the same boat, don't worry. I'm here to walk you through what no follow and sponsored links are and where and when you should use them on your blog to make sure you comply with Google's policies. So what are no follow links and when should you use them? In an effort to keep link building fair, Google wants to reward websites and blogs who build these links organically and who take their time building trust with their communities. So basically they want other businesses or brands to link to you because you've earned it and not because you paid for it. That's why it's a forbidden practice to pay for backlinks, even if it increases your SEO score. And if you often get requests to do that, disregard them. It is not worth the 30, 40 bucks that they're willing to pay to place a link in your blog when it can get you penalized in Google and they can shadow ban you from Google results forever, meaning you will not appear in Google searches anymore, which is one of the best ways to get free organic and relevant traffic to your blog or website. And if they find out that you've been paying for links or that you've included paid links to other brands on your website, they can penalize you both. To keep things simple, we want to stay on Google's good side. And we can easily do so by letting them know when we get commissions or when we get paid for including certain links, because that itself in a practice is not forbidden but you have to disclose that information to them. And the way you do that is by marking your paid links or specifically your affiliate links as no follow. So let me break it down. A do follow link is a default link. All links are considered do follow links unless stated otherwise. These give SEO juice to the destination. It tells Google to do follow the link to the source that it's relevant to the context you're inserting the link to and also pass along some of that SEO juice to the website in question. In general, you would use these kind of links to link back to your sources where you got some information from, to link back to other useful links and external links from other high authority websites that you found relevant or any other organic links. So if you haven't been paid to use a link and you're just inserting it because you think it's valuable to the blog post or it might be useful to the audience, then you can leave it as a do follow link. A no follow link, on the other hand, tells Google not to follow the link, not to give any extra juice or SEO value to the end website. It tells Google that you've been paid or you benefit in some ways from linking to this website. And in some scenarios, it tells Google not to follow the link, that it might be spammy. A no follow link acts the same way to the untrained eye. So your audience won't be able to tell the difference between how a do follow link and a no follow link look like. They look the exact same way. They still go to the destination URL, but the main difference is that it tells Google not to follow this link. And you can use this link when you've been paid to use it, such as sponsored opportunities, sponsored guest posts, affiliate links, or when you don't trust the end website. And then Google also recently introduced the sponsored link tag, which basically means what it says. It means that the link has been specifically paid for or sponsored. So if you've been paid to write a sponsored post about a brand and you include the brand website in there, you need to market a sponsored as well as no follow. Bloggers can make money in various ways. And I have a video on that if you're looking for more ways to monetize your blog. All is fair when you have a self-hosted website. You can decide how you want to monetize. Google is not against you making money out of these links. They just want you to disclose it. Let's look at how you should disclose these links if you have affiliate links versus sponsored links. If you use affiliate links on your blog, meaning you signed up to a brand's affiliate program and generated a unique tracking link, which allows you to get paid for every sale you make through it, then you need to toggle on all three options. So if you're in your WordPress dashboard and click on a link, you should have three toggles appear automatically and you want them all three toggled on. The first one just implies that the link is going to open in a new tab, which is important to do for any external link. You don't want people to lose their place and you want ideally readers to come back to the blog after they've done checking out your source. And then you also need to check the no follow link and the sponsored link. You need to do that because you are getting paid in the eventuality of a sale. And also you don't want to give any extra SEO juice because you have technically entered into a paid agreement with the affiliate network. And if it's a sponsored post or a sponsored collaboration on your blog, then you just want to toggle the sponsored tag. 
Keep in mind that you still need to do this whether or not you disclose verbally or written in the blog post that this is a sponsored blog post or this is this link includes affiliate. That is more for the benefit of readers and you do still need to disclose that to comply with several regulations whether it's the FTC in the United States or so on. But to let Google know specifically, you need to make sure that these little pieces of code are embedded next to your links. So again, the sponsored attribute should be attached to anything that's a sponsored collaboration, whether it's paid advertising spot on your sidebar, or it's a review that's been sponsored, or you've been sent the free product, or you've actually been paid for writing that article. And keep in mind that you do not need to do this for links if they're anywhere outside of your blog. So for example, on social media, you just have to disclose these links. You don't have to toggle anything with the links themselves, or even in emails or Facebook groups, you just need to disclose that they're affiliate or sponsored links without needing to do anything extra to the links. But obviously when you own your own website, Google looks at it a little different. So you don't want that itself to be penalized. As mentioned, if you own a WordPress blog, it's so easy to toggle these on by clicking on every link and doing a double check before you publish an article. However, if you don't see this option or you want to add this in the piece of actual code on any other blogging platform, I will leave in the description below the actual code that needs to be attached next to links that are no follow. For images in WordPress, for example, if you are adding an image of the product and adding the link there, then you can add that in the image attributes, which is a specific box where you just need to literally type in no follow. And of course, there are now savvier solutions to doing this rather than doing it manually. For example, for my blogs, I use the Lasso affiliate plugin, which I absolutely love. They create these like stunning boxes that make the affiliate links or images really pop out without making them look like too spammy. In there, you can type toggle on the nofollow link, as well as adding an automated affiliate disclosure at the bottom of every box. But making sure that your paid links are nofollow is a non-negotiable and it should be so for every affiliate link or brand partnership that you're working with. So if a brand wants to pay you, but they want the link to be do follow, I would stay clear from that because Google still knows. That being said, nofollow links still pass some SEO juice. They're not totally ignored by Google. So I would go back and negotiate with them, but don't put your whole blog's reputation in the eyes of Google at risks for one-time collaboration. I hope this helped, but if you have any follow-up questions about how and when to use nofollow links, let me know in the comment section and be sure to stick around and check out my channel for more technical videos on these little bloggings, do's and don'ts that I wish I knew earlier on.